We've got some new batteries. We've also got some Victron. That's right, we're going old school. We're going back from the power station, back to batteries and individual components. There's only one reason for it, and that is because I want more power. Now, 400 amp hours is more than enough for anybody. And I've actually got 360 amp hours in here already. So why upgrade to 400? Well, I'm gonna put more than this in there and I want the same batteries. If a power station ever fails, then I have a major problem because the whole unit has to leave the van. So my Bluetti AC200 Max, which has served me very well for, we're on June now and I got it in 1st of July. So almost one year, no problems whatsoever. Absolutely love it, still in the van. Spare battery still here for, for winter purposes. Never use it in the summer. But we're going back to batteries because I want a lot of power. And the reason I want a lot of power is I want to park up in winter, off grid, not move potentially, and not have to worry about running my engine to recharge my batteries because you get no solar in winter. So the idea is to put as much power in the van as I can fit and afford. But obviously, if something breaks, we can just remove it. And wow, it's hot in here. Uh, we could just remove it and replace it rather than sending the whole unit back. So it's not happened yet, but it could happen in the future. It's 30 do 33 degrees in this van. 33. I mean, because outside sweeping up. Can't show you because then I can give away my location, which is not what I want to do. Having fun? Yeah. What are you doing? Sweeping up. What for? Because I cut the because they were really wrong. And because of pocket money. Yeah? Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Good girl. Yeah, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove the bluetti which is in this cupboard here. And uh, yeah, that's come off. <laughs> so um, yeah, I'm gonna remove this. This will become my backup power or my additional power if you like. Um, and then I'm, I'm gonna fit this in the place, in its place. So let's crack on with that. Obviously this is a travel channel, not a build channel. So every time I do anything to do with van builds, I get so many messages from people going, why are you doing it like that? You're doing it wrong, you don't know what you're doing. The answer is, I don't know what I'm doing. You're absolutely correct. But I've got two people helping me externally. One is my good friend, Dave. In fact, I've got three people because I often reach out to Alex Froude as well, give him a follow up here somewhere. Um, good friend of mine and very knowledgeable on uh, van electrics. So uh, it's always helpful to reach out to him. There's other people like Greg, Greg Virgo, I can reach out to hundreds of people actually, really, if I'm, if I'm honest, but um, I've also got David as well from Leisure Bit, always helps me out. A drop of a hat will always help. Hello. And I will always help too. What do you know about electrics? The song, She's Electric. Right. Anyway, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm getting help from people who do know what they're doing. So feel free to abuse me in the comments for being rubbish. Before I do install them and hide them out of the way, let's talk about the battery. I've been sent batteries by Power Queen. I've got two times 200 amp hour battery so 400 amp hours which is about five kilowatts so i think i've got about four point something kilowatts in the van already so i'm definitely gonna have enough power and i've definitely got enough backup power as well so that's all good so yeah power queen have reached out to me they want to work together i was looking for batteries i've been reaching out to other battery companies as well and uh, these guys offered me a deal that i couldn't refuse so we are working in a partnership and hopefully it's a long-term partnership the details of these batteries will be put in the description as well as a link where you can get discount and you can buy them yourself. Obviously, this is a brand new install. So usually what I do is I install them and then I give people an update in like three months time about how the performance is. Um, I highly recommend that when anybody advertises something on YouTube, that you make sure it's not just a got this, advertising it, buy it make sure people have tested it beforehand. Plugging it in, pressing buttons, like the last video that I did on the Fluetti EB70, um, that's not been fully tested. However, that power station has been around for quite a while now, and I know several people that have got it, they've never failed. And I've obviously worked with several Bluetti power stations in the past, so I kind of trust the brand. Um, if it was a brand new company, I would absolutely test it, such as this All Powers one, I took that all around Austria with me and some places in England with me before I did a video on it. So always make sure that you buy off someone who you trust that's actually tested it and, and that it works properly. Because the last thing you wanna do 
is click on a link because it's your favorite YouTuber or whatever the case may be, buy it and then find out that theirs is knackered and yours is knackered as well. It actually happened with a torch with me. I bought a torch, which I desperately needed. I really needed a good, powerful torch and I was testing it and it broke. So if I had to put that on a video before I'd have tested it properly, which was what some people do, then loads of people may have bought it and then you end up with things that don't work. The batteries come with a nice little plastic wallet with all the paperwork in. And the first thing that we have is a manual. And that comes in both English and German. And a quick start guide. So it's obviously a product manual that tells you about all sorts of information. Quite like it actually, because um, it's quite easy to understand. Some of these you read and you're like, whoa, I haven't got a clue what they're talking about. And it comes with lots of useful diagrams like battery voltages and how to set your batteries up in parallel, in series, um, and also things like how to um, balance your batteries and, and how often you should do it as well. Uh, until I read this, I didn't realize you, you should balance your batteries every um, six months, which is quite interesting. Or at least that's what they recommend, the Q comments. That's, um, that's all useful stuff. So like I said, I've literally just taken them out of the box and I'm in a bit of a rush to get them uh, set up and put in the van. So we'll follow the guide even though it's pretty straightforward, and we'll take it from there. As you can see, batteries installed. There's a couple of temporary wires that are in place here. That's all gonna change because I've got some buzz bars coming which are gonna be fitted up here so everything can be connected properly through that. But already it's looking significantly tidier than what it was before. Um, there's still a few other things that I need to do. I've got some, um, the I don't know what they're called, the silicone covers that go on here just to make sure that they're all black and then that there's those ones are all red as well sorry about the crows guys we have got um probably about six thousand crows nests within 100 meters of the house <clears throat> um and same with those you know cover those with red cover that with red etc just to tidy it all up and these will all be zip tied together nicely any of these little nicks will be um changed over so i've got some um whatever they're called ring ends wire ring end things coming as well so um, it'll all be tidied up nicely and I'll probably hide it through the back as well. So that'll be decent. I'm really happy with the progress because this is not my skill set whatsoever. And um, yeah, it's something that's bothered me since January last year when I got my last one. So we're starting to make some good progress on that. Really happy, really happy that I've got the Victron and now the Bluetti will be the backup. So when you have more than one battery, um, you've got to connect them together. And there's two ways to do that. You can connect them in series or in parallel. And I've connected mine in parallel. Um, what that does is it doubles the amp hours. So the 200 amp hour battery. So I've now got 400 amp hours. If I connected it the other way in series, um, I would still have 200 amp hours, but my battery voltage would double. So they go from 12 volts to 24 volts, which is not what I need. You can do that as long as you've got a 24 volt system, but mine's a 12 volt system. So they're connected in parallel. Because I've used the power stations, I don't particularly measure anything in amps. Um, I'm used to measuring in watt hours. So I know that these batteries are about 2,500 watt hours. So I've got five kilowatts of power, which effectively means 5,000 watts. And my fridge is 60 watts. It turns on three times an hour for 10 minutes. So you can work out the maths by doing that. And uh, same with the rest of the it's a kit in your van everything's measured in watt hours so it's for me i find it easier to measure things in watt hours amp hours there's nothing wrong with doing that but that is how things are done on a 12 volt system in vehicles so whichever you find easier it makes no difference just do what you think is the easiest way that makes sense to you so i can't actually do any more now until amazon turn up with a few other things so um it's sunday that could take a while they're usually quite late on a sunday so what i'm going to do now is I'm going to install my aux beam switch panel. That'll be learning on the job because I don't really know much about that either. Again, it's electricity, so um, or electric electrics, 
uh, so I'm not too clued up with it, but it looks pretty straightforward. So if you are interested in a switch panel, which means you can turn lights on and things by using a proper panel, I'm going to have a look at that. If you want to watch uh, that video, then um, then I'll put a link in the description where you can you can go watch that video. 32 degrees. So you're going to have to excuse the hideous body. However, I've ripped out the electrics. I wasn't happy at all by any means. I'm no, we're now building a proper board. So we've got the power coming in, power coming in to a um, bus board, um, bus bar, power coming into a bus bar. Um, each one is fused, fuses individually on there. So I can actually isolate any one of them as I feel fit, which is good. So I'm just going to get everything connected up and try and get some power in before that sun disappears behind the house. Got flip flops on, guys. Crazy, crazy, crazy. The weather's changed. I think the new stickers. Bit of a giveaway now, isn't it? It's less stealthy, but it's good for the van shows. I might take them off, actually. I'm not too keen on them, if I'm honest. I'm thinking of getting some magnetic ones that I can just um, put on when the time's right. Like travelling down the motorway, and then when you park up, you can just take them off. So that's what I'm probably going to go for. This weekend, I've spent in the house, chilling out, relaxing, because I'm incredibly stressed out. Like, everything is a little bit too much at the moment. I'm not going to get into the details. I don't want any sob story comments. I'm just chilling out, having a bit of time out, and uh, yeah, getting on with some, getting on with some van jobs. So one of the things that I've always wanted to do, and if you've followed my channel for a while, you'll know that my electrics were shocking. Now everything was safe. There was no like chance of a short circuit or anything but it was pretty bad like it looked bad so one of the things that I wanted to do was get my head around it now like anything when you're not trained in it and you don't know how to do it you don't know what the things are called and you don't know how, you just don't know anything about it like I just crimped wires together and put them on and I thought that was okay because they were separated but you should put some uh, I don't even know what they're called heat shrink wrap coloured things around it to protect the terminals. So yeah, anyway, I watched a bit online and learned a little bit about it and uh, yeah, we've improved the electrics. So you probably haven't seen the electrics before because I didn't really like to show it to anybody, but now there's a significant difference. Are you ready? Take a look at this. Look at that. I am super, super happy with it. Now to most people or to many people, you're probably like, what, it's just electrics? Well. Yeah, it's just electrics, but I don't think my van's going to set on fire now. It wasn't anyway, it just looked a mess. So, under here are the batteries. So what I'm probably going to do, because there's a bit of a gap here, I'm actually going to lift them off the floor and I'm going to make use of the storage underneath. So there'll probably be, you know, this much storage underneath. I might put shoes under it or something like that, but I'm going to lift them off the floor because in the winter they will get very cold, like cold really cold so we'll lift them up so they're almost flush with this so that's that so the batteries are in there um they're both linked together and they're linked in a way that it doubles the amp hours not the voltage so the power you'll see that there's um positive to positive and negative to negative and then you'll see off the positive on one side and the positive and the negative on the other side that the power then goes up that comes into positive here and negative here and then from these buzz bars everything else is fed so i think if i can remember that goes to my aux beam switch panel big shout out to aux beam we're not talking about this we'll we'll mention it but we're not talking about it in detail because that's going to be on another video so that powers the aux beam switch panel the next one goes to somewhere that i can't remember I should probably label these up. It might make sense. The next one, this one, goes to my fuse box. And then the final one, 
comes from my charge controller into here. That's right. So I've got power coming from solar, comes from the ceiling, from the solar panels into this unit through these cables. It then leaves this unit into the buzz bar, regardless of which one it is. I know it is this one. It goes into here. Obviously it's connected to the battery, so it charges the battery. But in between that, we're powering the switch panel and also the fuse box. So on the fuse box, I have got my roof lights, my interior lights, my electronics that's in the front, my electronics that's in the rear. I've got a boot light and uh, that's for my, we won't say her name because we can, but um, it'll set all of yours off as well. So we won't bother. And then that's for the uh, ceiling fan as well. So there's a few more things to wire up, but that's as far as I got yesterday because uh, I was trying to make sure it was all neat and tidy and secure before I actually went anywhere. So everything can be isolated. You probably just heard my uh, power station go off. Um, we can isolate, so this is this goes between uh, the MPPT, so if I cut that now, this will, well it won't go off because it's connected to the battery, but it'll stop solar coming in. So if there's ever a problem with the solar panels on the roof or I need to do any maintenance, I can just hit that and that disconnects it. Obviously this isolates the fuse box, as we just saw, that'll turn everything off in the back of the van, apart from anything that is connected to the AUX beam switch panel that we're not going to talk about because that's in a different video. But if I want to work on anything on the switch panel, I can just isolate the switch panel as well. Right, so you'll notice there's a couple of gaps. That's because there's more stuff coming, but not yet. It's probably going to come later. I was going to buy a Victron DC to DC charger, so when I drive I can charge my batteries, but I don't need to. I've got 400 watts of solar on the roof and it's summer. I decided that it's probably best not to do that right now and wait until wait until the sun starts to disappear a little bit. And uh, I'm just looking up there, there's some thunder clouds coming. And in the next hour, I'm going for a run. I don't mind the thunder, I don't mind the rain. I actually love running in the rain, especially when it's warm, but don't want to get electrocuted by the lightning because that won't be very useful. Yeah, it's a bit disappointing. I've got a friend coming to see me to go for a run, so I'm probably going to go across the top of the hills, which means, uh, yeah, we just get hit by lightning if we do that, so that's not a very good idea. So, yeah, Victron uh, DC to DC, Victron and Ryan will go there, and one of the fuses there, and there's a few other little things that I've got planned. I may move these along a bit and use this panel as well, because there's a, obviously there's a false wall behind here, you can see. We've got a bit of a false wall. Another thing that I'm going to do that I haven't yet done very soon and i am doing this stage by stage so if you see something missing then you know don't go oh, why have you not got that there it's probably because i just haven't bought it yet i'm going to put some fans in here so i'm actually going to block this side off to create a separate unit here this will get blocked off i know it's quite a big area um but what we're going to do is we're going to put a perspex screen on the front so this will be have a clear screen on the front and then on each end or at least in two different places maybe here in here there'll be two computer fans one sucking one blowing so and they'll be on probably all the time because that's cooled down now but that was very hot earlier so i think if we're sucking air from here on front of a perspex screen here and we're sucking air and here we're blowing air in then it's going to create some sort of airflow even if it's just circulating warm air as long as it's creating some sort of airflow it'll definitely cool down wow there's a huge bird over there Anybody know what these birds are? Because over the last two or three years, I've seen so many of them in the UK. It's crazy. Not sure what they are. They're huge. I, I think I think they're buzzards, aren't they? Anyway, back to the uh, the video. So, so yeah, that's it all set up. It's functional. It's safe. There's only one thing that I need to do that I'm not happy with at the moment, and that is having a kill between the uh, the battery and the system. So while we can in, we, we can isolate that, we can isolate that, and we can isolate the solar panels, I can't isolate between that because I've got nothing between the battery and the bus bar. So I could actually probably do with either one between there or underneath here, putting one at the back there in, in between these two panels. Well, it'll, obviously it'll be on the red one. So I might, I might snip that and buy another one. So that's where we're up to. So yeah, obviously everything works as normal. 
Uh, I won't say the name of the young lady down there, but if I do... Obviously they work. Now, that looks like a mess, but I can assure you that's exactly what it looks like behind there. So again, we're probably just gonna create a bit of a false wall and hide these things as well. I am also thinking of rebuilding my entire bed area because I just want to create a little bit more space for Amika underneath. So I'm probably just moving up like eight inches, maybe 10 inches. So just lift up a little bit because ultimately this is a seating area. I know it doesn't look like it, but if you look here, well, you can't really see because of the lines in here, but there's actually a cushion here that comes out. It creates a sofa and there's a false floor in there. So I need to do a little bit of work. So I'll either modify it or just rip it out and start again. But when I do that, I may end up rebuilding this cupboard as well, sorting out the whole back of the van and making it a lot neater so they can sort out the electrics at the same time as that. So yeah, the obviously we're not really going to talk about the aux beam thing, but we've got power in the van now, which I really love. So um, we'll look at that on the other video. But yeah, on the other video, you'll be able to see all about how all of that stuff works as well. But trust me, it's the start of something really good. It's the start of something I've wanted to do for a very long time. So, so yeah, if you want to know more about that aux beam stuff, then there'll be a link in the description to the video once it's made and released. If it's not there yet, it's probably the next video coming. If you are interested in these batteries, which I cannot tell you a single thing about, because they've only been in for two days or three days. But so far, so good. They work, they provide power, and they've got a 200 amp hour BMS. So I don't know, I don't know what I can tell you about them. They work, they're good, they're batteries. 